गुड आफ्टरनून एलेवेंथ क्लास एज वी हैव स्टार्टेड सैम्पल पेपर्स सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग इन दैट ओनली येस्टरडे आई टुक वन पार्ट ऑफ दिस सैम्पल पेपर नाउ वी आर मूविंग अ हेड इन फर्स्ट वी डिड इंट्रोडक्ट्री माइक्रो इकनॉमिक्स इन इन दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड क्वेश्चन अप टू सिक्स और सेवन आई एल स्टार्ट अगेन क्विकली for the mcqs i'll tell you the answers first question at the break even point for a firm answer was a in this case break even point for a firm is tr equals to tc then for second question the demand curve of a firm would be a horizontal straight line under perfect competition so answer is a then oligopoly oligopoly though i told you that it's it has been deducted from course for the for this particular session but you should know the meaning oligopoly refers to a form of market in which there are only few joint firms against a large number of firms there is high degree of interdependence among the firms then question 4 why does the indian uh, government believe in fixing the support price for crops give reason so reason for this is indian government believes in fixing the support price for crops because the prices of some crops fall uh, below the certain level which is not fair for the farmers to earn their livelihood now question 5 in question number 5 price elasticity of demand is given and we need to calculate what percentage fall in price of the commodities there so we know the formula that price elasticity of demand equals to percentage change in demand divided by percentage change in price so it will be uh, if we will calculate by using this formula then price falls by 20 percent then there was difference between fixed cost and variable cost that i told you yesterday yesterday fixed cost refers to the cost which remain constant irrespective of the level of output and variable cost refer to the cost which vary with the level of output fixed cost example like plant and machinery variable cost example like cost of raw material then question number 7 what is meant by market demand and what is market demand curve how is it derived from the individual demand curve so for this question uh, it's a four mark question so we need to draw curve also in this let's do this question with the help of curve answer 7 market demand for a commodity refers to the total demand for the commodity by all the individual consumers in the market the market demand curve shows the different total quantities of the commodity which are demanded by all consumers in the market at different prices the market demand curve is derived from the individual demand curve by horizontally summing the various various individual demand curves so this can be understood with the, with the help of this diagram here you can see there are two goods good a and good b for good a demand curve is given first demand curve is for good a and second demand curve is for good b now if we will sum up for both these goods uh, for both these firms sorry these are firms not goods first demand curve is for firm a second is for firm b if we will uh sum it up then it will become market demand curve which has been shown in the third figure so it can be easily understood from here uh, for suppose for a commodity in the market there are two consumers a and b da is the demand curve for consumer a and db is the demand curve for consumer b at p0 price the quantity demanded by the uh, of the commodity by the two consumers is qa and qb accordingly the market demand and the summation of individual demand curve is qa plus qb as the price rises to the individual demand falls to qa1 and qb1 the market demand is qa1 plus qb1 so by joining the two points as obtained by market uh, for the market demand we get the market demand curve 
market demand curve is always the summation of the individual demand curves okay now next question question number 8 is with a 10% rise in the price of commodity the quantity supplied rises from 500 units to 550 units then calculate the price elasticity so here we will use the formula price elasticity of demand plus price elasticity of supply which is percentage change in quantity supply divided by percentage change in supply now percentage change in quantity supplied will be uh, how we will calculate that we will uh, do 550 minus 500 upon 500 multiply by 100 so 10 will be answer in that case now price elasticity of supply will come one in this case now next question also we did yesterday but i am repeating it as we need to do it with the help of curve next to next question we need to do with the help of curve question 9 we have done yesterday in the previous video question 10 with the help of a diagram explain the impact of the following on the demand for a normal good first is rise in consumer income of the consumer then change in taste and preference away from the from the good so we are going to do the answer with the help of curve here rise in income first case uh, first case is rise in income so with the rise in income of the consumer the demand for normal good increases this can be understood with the help of this diagram you can see over here with the rise in income of the consumer demand for normal good increases how it's increasing uh, you can see price is constant earlier quantity was q demand you can see it was the dark line dark orange line d or d dash is the new demand curve so according to the diagram dd is initial demand curve and op price oq1 quantity is demanded if income Uh, of the consumer rises the consu uh, demand curve will shift parallelly rightwards which is d dash or we can say dd1 d1 d1 so here at the same price the quantity demanded of the commodity is rises rising it is rising from oq1 to oq2 now second case was change in taste and preference of the consumer away from the commodity so that can also be uh, explained with the help of example uh, with the diagram uh, with change in taste and preference of consumers away from the commodity the quantity demanded of the commodity falls how this let's understand it with the help of curve according to the diagram dd is initial demand curve at op price OQ1 quantity is demanded if the taste and preference of the consumer moves away the demand curve shifts parallelly leftwards which has been shown by dotted lines you can see d1 d1 so here at the same price the quantity demanded of the commodity falls to OQ2 now our next question question number 11 is explain the following terms break even point and shut down point so break even point and shut down point now what is break even point break even point we have discussed in mcq also uh, when total revenue is equals to total sale that is break even point basically a firm is said to be at the break even point when it is just able to cover all its cost when price is equal to average cost and shut down point shut down point a firm is said to be at the shut down point when it is just able to cover only the variable cost at this point price is equal to 
एवरेज वेरिएबल कॉस्ट एज द फॉर्म इज नॉट एबल टू कवर द फिक्स कॉस्ट इट्स इनकरिंग लॉस इक्वल टू फिक्स कॉस्ट सो हाउ एवर द फॉर्म विल कंटिन्यू प्रोडक्शन टिल इट कैन कवर द फिक्स कॉस्ट सो दिस कर्व इज हेल्पिंग यू इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द शट डाउन पॉइंट according to this diagram the break even point is at point r and where uh, price op and it's equal to average variable cost now our next question is next question is explain the implications of explain the implications of the following features of perfect competition large number of buyers and uh, we are not doing this question as it has been deducted because of covid now we are moving to section b section b is for stats so first question in this is statistics uh, statistical data is essential for formulating policies of economic development illustrate with an example so answer for this is if uh, if the government wants to formulate or modify labor laws then the government will require statistical data so uh, on working conditions number of working hours and minimum wages received by workers this is an example for statistical data and how statistical data is essential then question number 14 though i discussed it yesterday also uh, no answer is given in the options a b c d if you will calculate mean x bar formula for which is sigma x divided by n sigma x will be sum of 30 Plus thirty six plus thirty four plus twenty plus forty two plus forty six plus fifty four plus sixty two, so total sum will come three twenty four. Then you will divide it by eight as eight workers are there. Then in that case, mean will come forty point five. Now next is exclusive and inclusive series. Exclusive series a series in which every class interval. excludes the term pertaining to its upper limit it is called exclusive series for example if it is like 22 uh, if it is 0 to 5 then next is 5 to 10 then 10 to 15 so 0 to 5 and 5 to 10 5 is coming two times so we cannot take 5 two times so it will be excluded in the first interval when we are talking about 0 to 5 there will be their values will be taken 0 to 4 4 only and 5 will be taken in the next interval so this is called exclusive class interval as the top value is excluded in this or we can say the upper limit of one class interval is excluded uh, there is no overlapping of the class limits now next is inclusive inclusive a series which includes all the items up to its upper limit is called inclusive a uh, series upper limit of class interval does not repeat itself as a lower limit of next class interval here if we see here will be 0 to 5 then 6 to 10 then 11 to 15 these kind of intervals will be there if we take the same example that we took for exclusive series now next question is the following table shows uh, the estimate estimates of cost of production of goods a b c and d present the data in the form of subdivided bar diagram uh, this we have done subdivided bar diagram so just do understand it the it with the help of diagram only now this is subdivided bar bar diagram for that question in that question you were given 
in the tabular form the data was given there and in the data raw material wages fixed cost office expenses these all things were given so these all have been taken on x axis raw material then wages then fixed cost then office expenses and on uh, y axis what they have taken number of companies number of companies has been taken on y axis so for raw material value was in table 60 45 50 50 50 so sub divided bar diagram how it shows in this our bar diagram is divided into sub parts bar diagram is divided into sub parts that's why we call it sub divided bar diagram here you can see in the picture also like one bar has been uh, divided among sub part so uh, raw material has been shown as 60 45 50 50 then wages again according to the table or according to the values 40 40 40 35 then fixed cost so, so what it is showing it's showing bar diagram now next question in this series was question 17 question 17 is in the following frequency distribution if the arithmetic mean is 42 find the missing frequency now you are provided with mean and what we are uh, what we have to calculate we have to calculate the missing frequency Uh, which has been denoted by x in the range 35 to 45 so let's do it question number 17 we are doing here salaries are given 5 to 15 then 15 to 25 25 to 35 in this way and number of employees given for that frequency is given 5 6 7 axis missing that we need to calculate then 4 3 9 so from here we can calculate sigma f sigma f will come 34 plus x after that here m we have calculated m is midpoint how we have calculated yes value of m we will calculate by adding lower limit and upper limit divided by 2 so it has been calculated like 5 plus 15 divided by 2 10 is coming then 15 plus 25 divided by 2 which is 40 upon 2 20 has come then 25 plus 35 60 divided by 2 Thirty has come. Then thirty-five plus forty-five, it's eighty divided by two. Forty has come. Uh, in this way, we have calculated the value of M. Now F M we have calculated. We have multiplied frequency and M. So it is coming ten into five fifty. Twenty into six one twenty. Thirty into seven two hundred ten. Forty x then fifteen to four two hundred sixteen to three one eighty six seventeen to nine six thirty. So from here we will get summation of F M will be fourteen thirty plus forty x. Now we know the formula for mean. What is the formula for arithmetic mean? It's x bar equals to sigma F M divided by sigma F. So sigma F already we calculated. It's coming thirty four plus x, and sigma F M it's coming for fourteen thirty plus forty x. So now we will put these values in formula, and we will do the cross multiplication. After doing that, we will get this equation fourteen twenty eight plus forty two x equals to fourteen thirty plus forty x. Then when we will solve it we will get 2x equals to 2 so x will come 
सो दिस वे वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द मिसिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी एंड मिसिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी इज वन इन दिस केस स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव कवर्ड सेवेंटीन क्वेश्चन रिमेनिंग क्वेश्चंस ऑफ दिस सैम्पल पेपर वी विल कवर अप इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो